Here's the real reason the Chicago Bulls are legitimate title contenders. Making NBA history prior to the All-Star break, DeRozan became the first player ever to post 35 plus points in seven straight games on 50 plus percent shooting, officially snapping Wilt Chamberlain's record. 2020's dunk contest champion Derek Jones Jr. ranks number three among all healthy Bulls players in plus minus, as the former Miami Heat player's wingspan and athleticism quietly make him one of the Windy City's most valuable two-way weapons. Meanwhile, coming off a typically clutch performance in the All-Star game, DeMar looks to resume his Jordan-slash-Kobe-esque season and bring home one of the most iconic franchises in not only the NBA, but in sports in general, its seventh championship ring, in 2022. But does Chicago have enough firepower to put themselves in the position to achieve the ultimate glory? My answer to that is coming up. Right quick though, only 12.3% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, to help this video spread, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. A breakdown of the dominance from Double D is coming up, but first, highlighting Chicago's under-talked-about depth at the small-slash-power-forward spot will lead off with Derrick Jones Jr. He isn't a primary scorer by any stretch of the imagination, but his value does show up in his near-team-best plus-minus and defensive rating. DJJ just returned from a bone bruise in his right knee, and then a fracture of his right index finger as he was recovering from that injury, with all the ruthless, dirty work that he does, whether it's on the glass, in the passing lanes, or guarding the ball on the perimeter, Coach Billy Donovan desperately missed the former dunk champion's services. Proving that, in three games prior to Jones Jr. returning, Chicago was allowing 118.3 points per game, equivalent to dead last among all 30 teams. Conversely, in the next three games following Derrick's return up until All-Star Weekend in Cleveland, the Bulls allowed just 109.3 points per night, which places them just behind the Memphis Grizzlies for 15th best. Albeit in a very short sample size and with tougher competition when he was injured, nevertheless, Jones Jr. helped take the Bulls' defense from being worse than the Houston Rockets when he was hurt to middle of the pack when he was active. Right here, after perfectly slithering around the screen from Darius Baisley, with OKC trying to get DeRozan switched on to Lou Dort, Jones Jr.'s wide, fundamentally sound guarding stance combined with his quick twitch all-NBA caliber instincts catch my fellow Canadian looking silly as DJJ easily reaches into the jar for some nighttime cookies, forcing Dort into a frustration foul, leading to shots for Derek on the other end, given OKC was in the penalty. Derek's also extremely valuable on the glass, as right here he grabs about five offensive rebounds, and while he comes up empty, I thought he deserved a whistle with a ton of Spurs making contact with him. Even after Javante Green gets 1-0 board, while most players would have headed back on defense on this possession, Jones not only continues to crash the glass, but perfectly times his jump for the putback with a ton of traffic around him, just special stick to itiveness. Lastly, for the film room on Derek, the most essential quality he gives Chicago isn't merely the on-ball defense like you saw a minute ago on Lou Dort and his rebounding, but his help on the back end. It's weak side help defense like this instance right here, where Jones first blocks off the passing lane to the corner and then beautifully rotates over to the paint, forcing Pirtle back for a jump hook instead of a layup that seemed to happen extremely often. From an opponent's perspective, there's some scary evidence leading to the fact that Derrick Jones Jr. makes Chicago a lot tougher to get buckets on, and once Alex Caruso and Lonzo Ball get to full strength, that becomes the case times 1,000. Moving on to what you probably clicked on this video for, it's now officially safe to say that we've never seen anything like what DeMar DeRozan's been doing for the Bulls franchise, an organization that hadn't sniffed contention in around a decade. When healthy, Zach Levine's been the NBA's best second option and a bona fide all-star, and even with Zach missing time, it's been far from just DeMar. We'll talk about two faces stepping up for the Bulls later on, but just like Chris Paul did for the Phoenix Suns in 2021, 21-22 has seen DeRozan reverse the fortunes of a team that had been bottom-feeding before his arrival. The historic, overpowering fashion in which the MVP candidate DeRozan has gotten it done puts him in the same sentence as some of our game's greatest to ever lace him up, and it's simply been amazing to watch play out. 
As a fan in Toronto who was inspired by DeRozan, while I was thrilled from the moment after acquiring Kawhi, I couldn't help but feel terrible that DeMar missed out on our city, really our country's first championship. After five straight grueling playoff appearances of getting bounced before the NBA Finals, and three straight years of being eliminated by LeBron, after King James joined LA on July 1st of 2018, I'm sure DeRozan was putting in a ton of reps after that, thinking he was the new king of the Eastern Conference. Discussions with Masai Ujiri led Debo to believe his job in the T-Dot was safe, but 17 days after LeBron, aka the one man standing in his way for years, went to the other conference, DeRozan was in a movie theater in his hometown of LA watching The Equalizer 2. A phone call from Masai Ujiri told him, quote, We just traded you to San Antonio. I just wanted to let you know it's going to come out in the morning. As a fan of the game and rec league talent, I can sit aside from a distance and only imagine in my head the gut-wrenching feeling that DeRozan must have had, and based off the fact that after he heard the news, he sat in a jack-in-the-box for two hours, the Compton kid felt every bit of that pain. Translating that heartbreak to motivation, go watch this video, which I left a link in the description to, to see how DeRozan made history in San Antonio. But since his Toronto experience, just knowing who DeMar is from a distance, I can tell he's upped his work ethic significantly since hearing every one of those words from Masai Ujiri on the phone, and that's shown up in his generationally great 2021-22 output. In 55 games, the five-time All-Star is giving the Bulls, who are tied for the number one seed out East, a league fourth best, 28 points per night, to go along with five dimes and five boards on shooting splits of 52-34-87. Not only did he break Wilt's record by becoming NBA history's first player to score 35 points at the very least while shooting 50% from the field in seven consecutive games, but as I've mentioned a few times in prior Shy town uploads, December 31st and January 1st saw Debo give Bulls fans the New Year's present of a lifetime as he surpassed Larry Bird, who did it in back-to-back -back games, to become the first player to make game-winning buzzer beaters on back-to-back -back days. Even more insanely, those winners were both contested three-point shots with his team down two points, one being in the face of a premier wing defender in Torrey Craig, and the other with two defenders draped all over him. While I'm a diehard Raptors fan first, I'd still be more than happy to see DeMar carry this Kawhi-esque clutchness over to the 2022 playoffs, which is one of the reasons the Bulls have become such a popular topic on my channel. Other than Debo, the two biggest offensive contributors stepping up without Levine are Nikola Vucevic and Kobe White. After being incredibly inconsistent to start the season, Vuce hit rock bottom, making only four of his 19 shots against his former team, the Orlando Magic, on January 23rd, but ever since then, Nicole has been playing at an all-star rate. In 14 games since that Orlando outing, Vucevic is averaging 23.3 points, 13.1 boards, and 4.1 dimes in 36.2 minutes per game. To be fair, his three-point shot has been cold at just 30%, but he's still at 58.2% from the field overall, despite the poor three-point shooting. Vuce is shooting a red-hot 67.4% on two-pointers, so all those chippies around the basket he was missing earlier in the year are finally falling for him as of late. Just look at the man's shot chart. It's worth noting that nearly 56% of his shot attempts have come in the paint during this stretch, which is a big jump from earlier in the year. Still though, for the Bulls' title chances, it's great to see Vooch in this kind of rhythm. Then there's the third year man out of UNC, a playmaking shot creator blossoming right before our eyes in Kobe White. Mr. White was in a slump right around the same time Vooch hit rock bottom, but he's picked things up in a major way during the month of February. While Kobe wasn't involved in many trade rumors, it must have been a relief for him not to be moved, given he's 21 of 33 from three-point range since the deadline, 24 of 43 during the five-game winning streak, and is shooting nearly 51% for the month. That gets him to over 40% from three-point range on the year. In the last few games especially though, White's been showing off a well-rounded game. He's averaging 23.3 points, 6.3 rebounds, and 4.5 assists while shooting 56.4% from the field since that trade deadline. Other than DeRozan, who's Chicago's most important player without Levine in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. 
Top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question. Today's Speaks winner is Lex Andrew Bontoc, who says, For me, the Sixers are the best contender for the title this year. If James Harden or Joel Embiid can sacrifice touches for the team, the pick and roll with those two are unstoppable. Joel can roll or pump. They are scary. They have all the pieces around those two. Trust the process. Appreciate every answer. This was D-Flow. I hope you have a great one, and I'll see you next video.